Yeah, man. So it's been a long time, man. So uh, just for you know, for everybody that's gonna tune in and listen, Gray Maynard. We're joined by Gray Maynard, uh, former UFC title contender, uh, fought for the title uh, two times. Uh, some amazing fights you've had, amazing career, decorated amateur wrestler, two-time state champion, Nevada and Ohio, the second place finish your junior year, three-time All-American at Michigan State University, over a hundred wins. He's uh, one of the uh, one of our one of the best ever to come out of Michigan State University, uh, and went on to a successful, amazing fight career, and now uh, now he's a successful. Uh, philanthropist, business owner, running a gym in Lansing, Michigan. What's the name of the gym? It's it's Prime Combat. Is that what it is? Primed Combat, yeah. And then uh, Jess has a smoothie bar. That's right, uh, yeah. Acai, coffee, and that's called Blend. It's all together. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, and, Je- and so uh, uh, Gray's wife, Jess, was actually – we're all athletes together at Michigan State. She played uh, – she was uh, on the field hockey team. And uh, we're on the wrestling team. How's she doing? How's how's Jess doing? Jess is great, man. Just plugging away, um, kind of learning the the food business, the coffee business, and and um, just a lot of learning going on, growing, and and uh, trying to spend time with our kids as much as possible. You know, take trips where we can, and and um, yeah, just living the good life. That's good, man. I mean, it's tough. Like a lot of people make this transition. The transition is difficult sometimes for, or for, you know, a lot of times for a lot of athletes after the career is over, you know what I mean? Or, what, or, or on hold or on pause or whatever. And it's, you know, I think it's, a, it's, you're a good example of a guy who's been able to make a transition into something good and positive in life, you know, we, and we had talked about that previously. And so congratulations on that and keeping all that going. How old are your kids now? Uh, five and 10. Nice. Yeah. Same yeah. as my ages too. Yeah. 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 yeah I no, got a little cool. boy that's five years old and a daughter that's 10. You got great. So it's Greta or not, not Greta. I'm sorry. Greta's your niece, right? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, that's my niece. Greta and Griffin are Travis's kid, Travis right. and Travis and my sister's kids. And then, uh, Stella and Gio. Gio, that's right. That's my yeah, kid. Yeah. 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 Awesome, man. Two stud athletes from uh, the the genealogy of uh, or the genetics of two stud Division One athletes and professional athlete. So yeah, that's awesome, we'll, man. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Funny story about Gray. So I did. So I I first met. I first saw him at the high school nationals when we were seniors. Gray won. Uh, I took third place. Uh, and I remember this guy coming up and he was just jacked, like, like, looked like a, like a 25 year old man. And, uh, he comes up and he's like, Hey man, I might go to Michigan state. I heard you go there. And I was like, yeah, man, cool. So I didn't really know much about him. And then, um, we became roommates and then the first week of school. So we're like, yeah, we're, you know, it's like, it's like welcome week or whatever they call it. Spartan week. And we're there and we're going to like yeah. house parties and stuff. And, uh, we're going to these house parties and then like all of a sudden like gray like disappeared for a little bit we're like going from house to house and we're like man we can't find him we don't know where he is and we're like looking and we're like so we go outside and we're like walking down the street and all of a sudden i see i see this guy fighting like five people on a lawn in front of a house and i see a chair up in the air and he's like hitting people with a chair and all of a sudden the cops pull up and uh they like <laughs> have a little tussle with gray do you, do you remember this you know what i'm talking about yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so they grab him, and then yeah, uh, DJ Dean. That's right. He started it all too. <laughs> no, I know. Was, yeah. And when the cops <laughs> came, they were like, all the guys. They they were kind of like hippie, you know, whatever. They're like, these guys started it, and and BJ would always start fights, but he'd always be the guy that that got beat up. And of so course. <laughs> these guys, these like hippies were beating him up. Yeah, I was handing him on my own, and yeah. then uh, he stands up, and he's got, like, a bloody nose, and these guys are like, hey, these guys came up, and they're starting a fight, and BJ stands up with a bloody nose. He's like, who looks like who started the fight? <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? I was dying. No. <laughs> no, we still had to go to jail. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they don't all have holding endings. Tank, holding tank. Oh, okay. So that's the first. So that was like my first, like not not a prey, but I was like, okay, I'm dealing with a like a, this is a this is a tough dude, a real man, an alpha dude, and uh, I was like, okay, so this is a guy that's a you know a real fighter and great, you know. Gray obviously went on to have an amazing uh, college career, um, and he was always like, uh, like five steps ahead of me. I was like still living with my parents. This is a guy who had done a lot of things. Like, you, like for the transition, you like left Nevada for you're in Nevada for two years, and then you moved to Ohio for two years. So you had lived like on your own in high school for two years, not on your own, but like with yeah, yeah. surrogates or whatever, jumping around house to house. Yeah. So when I met Gray, he was like a man, you know what I mean? Like he was like been a real man, had done a lot of things that I had never done before, never even heard of, you know? And uh, so he's I always been like- I don't know if like that a, considers me a man, but, but, but yeah. I definitely, you know, grew up a little bit and, and could handle my own, you know, which I think that's good for every kid, you know, to, to kind of give them a little bit of play on the leash and, and let them, fall down and and you know get back up and learn what life is about yeah no i got you is that your kids in the background yeah they're playing that's cool i trust yeah. me i i hear it with my boys all the time too having a gym to play yeah. in would be awesome i know right? you're a kid just running around <laughs> wrestling having mats everywhere it'd be amazing a dream oh, man. man they they get after it they get after it so so Fun. so so tell so let's talk a little bit like how like your start in wrestling like you come from a good wrestling pedigree your dad your dad was uh we'll talk we'll talk we'll talk two about time. It a little bit yeah yeah he was a two time state champ in Ohio he he was uh, he's kind of a local legend you know and and in Cleveland uh, right yeah Cleveland area you know it's like sports are huge there and yeah. you know if you're a two time state champ especially back then it was like you know, it really meant something and, and uh, you know, people looked up to him, but got going in wrestling at an early age and played a bunch of different sports. My my mom tried to keep me active. Um, you know, doctors were were telling her I needed to be on Ritalin, but she just knew that um, I was a boy and I just or I take that back. I was a kid. You know, because all kids need to to get it out and and to be active and and um, you know I just was in every sport, did a lot of activities and and um, but um, I didn't really fall in love with wrestling until I mean I was always a wrestler, but uh, around seventh grade, you know I I really uh, fell in love with the sport and. You know, um, was there like a pivotal that, moment? That, well, go ahead. Was there a pivotal? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's when I watched uh, Tom and Terry Brands wrestle mm. at the at the U.S. Open, and I think what really appealed to me was the violence that they brought onto the mat. I I didn't know that the sport could be that, and I'm not saying that in a a, a weird way, but just the intensity and the um, the controlled aggression that they brought, you know, really, um, really clicked with me. And that's, that's kind of when I just tunnel visioned exclusively on that sport. And I wanted that, right. I wanted to be those guys. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Two icons in the sport, Terry and Tom Brands, we all know, you know what they've done yeah, for the sport you know and and tom yeah, and terry and being the head coaches of iowa now well go ahead yeah and that's a great part about that sport is is you know as a kid i could go to a to a u.s open or a tournament and be that close to the best guys in the world right and um you know i got to watch them warm up and i remember just how how rugged and um intense the two guys were and you know it just really really caught my eye it caught my attention and and i started you know i had watched some in the ncaa's a couple times but you know i really 
really was watching them a lot, you know, and kind of studying their films and, and it just, just brought a whole new level to the game. Yeah. And you were the first guy. I remember you, uh, when we, when we were roommates in college, you, you were like an early pioneer of watching film. You know what I mean? I remember you having films yeah. all the time and we were watching them and I had never really done much of that at all. So that was like a big, big, big piece that you were doing early on also. Did, didn't you, did you, you ever get a chance to spend time with uh, Tom or Terry Brands in, in camp or anything? Didn't you go to one of their, a couple of their camps or you spent time there? No, no, I got to hang out with the, yeah, like, um, I think when I was a kid, there was a bunch of camps I would would go to, gotcha. you know, and stuff with them. But then, um, yeah, just, you know, just kind of talk to them a lot. And uh, whenever I did see him, um, I wrote him a letter my freshman year in college to yeah. Tom Brands, you know, asking, like, what it took, you know, to be where he's at. And, and uh, he wrote me back and, and um, yeah. He's I remember that. Good I remember model. that. Yeah. yeah, I remember he, you he, you wrote a letter to him, and he wrote like a five page letter back to you with like details yeah. of what to do. Right? Yeah, yeah. that yeah. was awesome. And we were at different schools too, right? So we're at yeah, yeah. we're at Michigan State, yeah. and he's an assistant coach at Iowa at the time. Yeah, yeah. That was awesome. That was cool. Great role model. I mean, I yeah. couldn't have you know chosen a better one. Um, you know, as a kid, because growing up, I did get in a lot of trouble you know, in the earlier ages. And, uh, you know, it was, it was basically more energy and looking, f looking for, you know, thrills and whatever. Just, just a kid, man. Just, yeah. um, just an outlet. you know, you're in a class eight, you're in a class eight hours a day. And, and it's like, you know, I'm an active guy. I try to be active at least. And, and, uh, but you know, once I really fell in love with like the sport, you know, and I had the idols, it was, it was easier to, to focus on what I needed to do to be the best I could be. Yeah. Awesome, man. Um, you know, and then, and that, yeah. And then, so you had that, you had the great college run and then the transition to, uh, to MMA afterwards. Right. So you, yeah. you know, you spent a, I remember like you spent a, you spent a year after high school or, or I'm sorry, after college, uh, doing different things, but then you, then you made the choice to go in full fledged into, into MMA. Right. Yeah, I went out to ASU to go train with uh, Blackford and Eric Larkin. You know, I, right. I was kind of contemplating doing a 2004 Olympic run, but I was kind of caught between the two weight classes. At the time, right. it was 163 and 145. And, um, you know, I was just like too small for 63 and a little too big for 45. And, um, uh, you know, I spent a good year and a half just training with them and then ended up going back to Las Vegas and getting into real estate when the market was hot. And um, yeah, back before uh, 2008. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and then just kind of was tired of lifting weights and running on a treadmill and, and ended up getting into a jujitsu gym. And, um, where, where it was, um, there was a lot of Hawaiians there and I guess word got back to BJ Penn and he flew yeah. me out, to, uh, to go help him train to go up against a Gracie. It was over in Japan and, um, yeah, flew down there for about three weeks, trained in Hawaii and, and, and that's kind of where I caught the bug. Nice. Yes. Yeah. So you spent three weeks with, uh, uh, helping out BJ Penn for one of his fights. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, man. Um, and then that, and then from there was, was Randy, was Randy Couture already in Vegas at the time or was this like, so I guess he was, but, um, you know, I was training at a Cobra Kai school. There was a lot of good guys, but, um, right when I came back from Hawaii, um, the U.S. Opens were going on, and do you remember Kevin Vogel? 
Yeah, yeah, Kevin. Yeah, the, yeah. the Central Michigan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was a uh, he was a great guy. Yeah. Anyways, we awesome were having guy. dinner together, and I told him about Hawaii. I just came back, and you know, I might want to do this um, the sport. You know, I like MMA, and and um, anyways, right then and there, he calls up Randy Couture. He's you know, he asked him if he moved down there yet. He did, and uh, Randy told Kevin to tell me to show up at um, – at the time, he was training at the Tough Gym, and uh-huh. I showed up there, and uh, Forrest Griffin was there, Jay Huron, Mike Pyle. Right. Um, Stefan, too. Tyson Stephen Griffin Bonner. wasn't there yet, but it was just a lot of really good guys, and, and um, yeah. Yeah. Nice man, and then that was kind of it, right? Then, then Randy opened his gym, and then, then kind of the rest is history. Yeah, sort yep. of. Yeah. No, um, we were talking. Uh, you know, obviously, you've had some some awesome fights, an amazing career, uh, but uh, we were talking about you know um, the, the your first fight. I remember you you asked me, to, or you you actually had a ticket for me, and I came out to the fight to watch. You, uh, after the Ultimate Fighter TV show, after you got on the uh, show yeah. and your uh, your yeah. fight with Emerson, where you're smashing them, right? Yeah. Smashing them, yeah. smashing them, and then uh, well, go ahead, Jordan. Would you, yeah, remember like he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean that was that, that was an intense bout right there. But I I was wondering like uh, for those who don't know you, you know you picked him up and you just slammed the crap out of him. Yeah. I guess uh, you yeah. know he and he tapped. And they pleaded at no contest because, like, you didn't respond, you know. Yeah. Uh, and I was just wondering, did you have, like, anything you wanted to follow up on that? Because, that, like, I can't imagine, like, the intensity of that moment when, like, especially when they call that, you know what I mean? Like, he tapped. You, yeah. you did what you yeah, were supposed yeah. to do. And then. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously I was pissed. And um, the story behind that is, do you remember Joe Stevenson? Yeah. Joe Daddy yeah. Stevenson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Joe Daddy Stevenson. Anyways, he um, he was helping me on that last week, you know, cut weight and train. And, um, like, I remember drills we were doing. We were picking up – it was a punching bag, which is really big, right, really mm-hmm. round. And I was picking them up, slamming them, picking them up, slamming them. And we'd go through those drills a lot. And, um, you know, obviously – a, a human body is a little bit slimmer, right? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, so <laughs> I just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I just, once I had him up, I was like, oh, this is the drill. And I yep. slammed him down and <laughs> broke his ribs. And, and, um, I love you too. Hey. All right. Bye. Hi. This is Nick Fichetti. I went to, went hi, to sweetheart. Nice to see you. Nice yeah. to see you too. Yeah. All right, baby. Bye. But um, yeah, and I slammed him down, and and like obviously I hit my head pretty hard. I wasn't out. I just really couldn't coordinate my body too much. But yeah, I was like, get up, get up, get up. But yeah, it just um, you know, at the end of the day, that's half your paycheck, and yeah. uh, but you so know, it's just a tough pill to swallow is that so you're like you both got the the lesser pay because it was no contest is that how that works yeah yeah oh yeah. wow that's neat yeah because there's a the way they did it was i mean everybody's different but it's a fight show money and then the the, the win money yeah, yeah 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 so they just get they both get the win, show money get that half yeah uh no man, yeah, that was that was a crazy fight. And I remember you after it. I remember you being so pissed. You were like, "I was fine. I was completely fine." You were fucking pissed. <laughs> I don't know about fine, <laughs> right? Yeah, but that's what. You, but that's I was telling him that. that you know, like, yeah. To know that they they fucking called it a no contest. Yeah. I mean, one thing you got to say about Gray Maynard, if you don't know him, like the dude is intense. He's calm. He's very calm demeanor. Calm demeanor. But if there's ever a situation where you need to be super intense or you need an intense guy on your side, that's that's him. This guy can He's got the switch. On. He's got the switch. Like Stallone yeah. and uh over the top. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a light switch. Yeah, I think I you know, I really attribute that to to 
just, you know, life, you only have so much intensity moments, you know, use them wisely. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) That's a good way of looking at it because it is true. Like they, they, they're few and far in between. And then, uh, I know myself, there've been like a few events where if you don't like bring it all, you know what I mean? And then for like, for the rest of my time, I'm like, dude, I didn't give it everything I had, you know what I mean? Now I'll never know, you know what I mean? Like you, uh, so you should just, if you have that switch, I think that's a, that's a really good philosophy to, uh, to abide by. Obviously yeah. it's worked very well yeah. for you. Decent, decent, you know, a lot of goals that weren't attained and, and, but, um, you know, that's the driving, uh, force to, to get my next goals, you know? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, no, I mean, goals are great. You know what I mean? I think it's, I think it's very, I mean, we can talk about this because this is, this is a topic area. You're a guy that's obviously very, very goal driven. Um, And, but what I also noticed about you too, is that you also, you enjoy life. You know what I mean? You weren't a guy that just only wrestled or only fought and then just like, you know, didn't do anything else. You know what I mean? Or only studied it all the time. Like you had, yeah. there's a lot of avenues to you. There's a, there's a complexity to you. Like what, what do you, what are some of the things that, and you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but like, what are some of the things that you like to do? Like, for example, I noticed that like you're a guy that could train hard, you could focus, but then you knew that there was a time for recreation afterwards. And, you know, and is that a philosophy you still abide by? You still believe in that? Oh yeah. You know, um, work hard, play hard. There's a, you know, there's a time and a place for everything as well. But, um, you know, and, and obviously your play hard is a little bit different when you're younger and, and, you know, compared to now, but, um, uh, yeah, you just got to enjoy life. I mean, it happens like that. Right. And, um, you never know when it's going to be, when it's going to be over, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I definitely never wanted to look back and regret stuff. You know, that's why, um, I always wanted to go up against the best competition, you know, just, just even, even at an early age, it was like, you know, I won a nev, nev, nev fattest, uh, champion chip. And then, you know, I wanted to move on to go up against, you know, the top guys in the country right. and kind of test my medal there, uh, yeah. you know, and, 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 and just in that process, you learn a ton of stuff, you know, just being in college, um, you know, and not attaining my goals. Why didn't I attain the goals? Well, I think, you know, like learning in college, I really – was uh too f- too focused on the long term goals instead of taking care of the short term goals the daily goals the weekly goals the monthly goals you know it was always NCAA title NCAA title and that's the revolving goal that was going on in my head but instead of like how can i make today the best how can I make this week the best? What do I need to work on today to get better? You know, and, and, and that's really what, what a good coach kind of sets apart, um, uh, is really helping his athletes, you know, just making the most of every day, right? every week, every month, you know, and then as that builds up, as all those smaller goals build up, you're prepared you always got the NCAA title or the long-term goal, you know, in the back of your head. But, um, you know, it's, it's important to take care of the day to days and, 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 uh, you know, yeah, keep it going. Man. I mean, the thing is, is too, is like, you can't ever say that you never went for it. You know what I mean? Or I, you know, you're not one of those guys talking, you know, like, uh, back in high school, I could have done this or I could have been that, or, you know, you hear guys talk like that often. I, I run into it all the time, but you're a guy that actually went out and did attempt everything and you went after it. And it's, it, you know, it's, a, it, I like to use this analogy that life is like, um, 
it's a marvelous journey. I know you know all this already, but it's a marvelous yeah. journey that you're on and you're, it's not going to be yeah. perfect. You're on a, you're on a boat and you're traveling. You're going to run into storms. You're going to run into, yeah. you, you know, you're going to get capsized. You're going to get marooned. You're going to get, you know, mutinied by the crew on the ship. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's these destinations that you're traveling to. You know? Yeah. It's a, it, it's a good point. You brought that up because that's one of the reasons why I got into MMA was um, I don't I can't remember if it was before I went to Hawaii or after, but um, I remember I was going over. Uh, do you remember Matt Walker? Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, we were watching Matt Hughes go up against a person over at his house. Had a couple beers, right? Uh, you know, feeling confident or whatever. And um, Matt was asking me about Matt Hughes. You know, there was a couple people over there. They're like, hey, Matt Hughes, he was only a two-time All-American. Would you beat him? I was like, oh, yeah, definitely. You know, had a couple <laughs> years in me, of course. But I do remember this, and I give myself a little credit on this. I woke up the next day feeling like the biggest piece of crap, you know, because I talked out of my mouth, right? right? I talked I talked without analyzing it you know it was just kind of beer talking and i i i was pissed because i was like i never want to grow up to be that guy on the bar stool talking about i could have did this i could have beat that guy if i would have tried and that's that's really one of the the one of the moments that that i knew you know i had to go into mma I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Well, that's the pivotal it, moment. Least. Yeah. Uh, One of the pivotal moments. Wanna, yeah. And then, yeah. you know, I mean, you had some, you had amazing fights, obviously the memorable fights with Frank Edgar, your first time you went out and kind of handled them. And then, uh, the next couple wars that you had with him were, I forget yeah. if it was the first fight or the second fight where man, like you hit this guy, you basically knocked his head off. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, like, yeah. uh, and the guy just it was like a zombie. He just kept getting up and I couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah. oh my God. And the ref probably could have stopped it at a couple times, you know, yeah. but he didn't. Yeah. And uh, you guys fought to a draw for that first one. Right. And then, uh, or the, yeah. the, the first yeah. title fight, I mean, right. Yeah. And then, and then the next one, you know, uh, you know, the, the other title fight, it was highly anticipated. And the thing is, man, you know, like you, like one thing about you, you always put everything on the line. You're a dude that did everything the, the, you know what I mean? Like if there was a guy that was like, yeah, this yeah. guy, you know, doesn't work hard or train hard. You worked hard. You worked efficiently. You, you calculated. I remember you, you keeping logs of everything and, and, and just being the most detailed guy I've ever seen in training. I've never yeah. seen it before. I obviously yeah. didn't do it that way, you know, and you know, wow. maybe that's part of what was part of my, you know, my, um, uh, the problems that I had. You, in my performance. you were one of the hardest workers. You just, you could turn your brain off and just go. That was yeah. that was one thing, you know. I knew about you, like like I remember we were running our preseason runs, and he got this piece of glass in his foot on like mile one, and we had like four more miles to go, and he just kept running with it, you know. And uh, <laughs> I blood forgot everywhere. About I forgot blood about that. everywhere. I was like, all right, I like this guy, <laughs> <laughs> and still probably beat everybody. You know, um, insane, you know, amount of just work ethic and, and uh, just drive, you know, yeah. it was great. It was, it was fun, great. man. You're a good teammate. Yeah. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. And, you know, obviously a great leader like you, transferring all that now into, you know, the other parts of your career, too. And uh, it, I'm happy to see that, that it's, it's, uh, it's going well. You know, in the, in the transition, you've made a successful transition into other things. Is there anything you'd like to say about, like, in those fights, in those title fights with Ed, with Edgar or, uh, you know, any, any comments you'd like to make about it all? I mean, that guy, obviously, like, you know, you know, at the end of the day, like, you've done all you can do and you come up short. Yeah. I mean, you have to give yourself yeah. credit. You know what I mean? You've That's done everything you can do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, you know? there, yeah. I don't think anyone could ever say he left anything or, or he left the mat with anything. You know what I mean? Like just the absolute ferocity you came out of the gate with like, uh, yeah, you, know, no, you just dripped it, every it, ounce. 
squeeze. Yeah. Yeah. It was hats off to him. And it was a, it was, um, it was great to, to share the cage with him. Um, you know, he's, he's a, he's a tough competitor. Um, you know, and just, just going back over the camps and, and the ups and the downs and, and, um, it just really, you know, it is a journey and, and, um, you know, it, it definitely makes you stronger win, lose or draw, uh, just as long as you, you, um, you turn over every stone and, and just leave, leave nothing on the table. You know, to be honest, it's, it's, um, that's when, you know, you never sleep after a loss or you never, it's never right. You, you can never make it right. And, um, but it's, it's definitely a lot easier than if you have stones unturned and you have question marks about what you could have done. And, um, you know, that's always a driving, uh, force pretty much for whatever I do. You know, whether it's remodeling a house or, uh, you know, playing with my kids, it's it's just you're never going to get it back. You're never going to get that time back and you better make the most of it. Yeah, it's absolutely that, true. That's a championship attitude right there. That's the way to think. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, um, you know, and it, it, it kind of really hit me when like when my dad died as well. Um, yeah. you know, uh, he was a very talented guy and, and, uh, you know, personable, you know, sky was the limit, but you know, there was a lot of stuff that, that he did have a little question marks and watching the eyes close for the last time is, is really, you know, surreal, you know, and you watch it happen and it's, it's just kind of like. You know, it makes you go back over your life like, all right, you know, how can what can I change if if I need to change? You know, how can I do this to make whatever part of my life or the next part of my life, you know, even more uh, what, what you can kind take of worthwhile? And, and yeah, yeah, important because I mean, got death and taxes, right? <laughs> you're, yeah. you're definitely going to get those two in life. Right. Yeah, that's true. You know, things that are certain in life being, you know, living in America. Yeah. Now, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a hell of a way of looking at it and understanding that our own, that this, this, this life, this world isn't permanent, you know, like no. you said before, we get one shot at it. Right. And your dad, I got to say yeah. one thing about your dad. Your dad was a wonderful guy. I knew him very well. Um, one of the kindest men I've ever met in my life. I remember we, we went out to Las Vegas. We were living, we were living in Michigan at the time. We went out to Las Vegas for uh, your 21st birthday. And I remember, yeah. you know, uh, I, I had this, like, we were going to go out to the, to the clubs in Vegas, right? The clubs were big. And, um, yeah. I was like looking, you know, I was like, oh, my shirt's dirty. I had like one dress shirt I could wear. And then yeah. your dad went out of his way and like, ironed my clothes like he ironed everything for me like he ironed my shirt ironed my pants <laughs> i think he might have even ironed yeah. my underwear too yeah. you know he's just yeah. the, the yeah. nicest yeah. kindest guy you've ever met yeah. you know he he definitely wanted everybody to have a good time and to to you know to live the best you know and uh you know enjoy life yeah man Man, we have so many stories that we could get into right now. I just, you know, oh like, oh my god, uh, too many. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, so there's another funny story. So, like, we're all living together in the same house in college for for a year, and I was not. I, I'll, I'll admit, I was not the greatest roommate in the world. Look, uh, looking in retrospect, because uh, I've. I'm trying to, I'm still, I'm a recovering slob. I'm not going to lie. I'm one of the sloppiest people <laughs> I've ever come in my, uh, come across in my life. Me and uh, Dr. John Wechter, who I think we might have as, as a guest on the show too. He might beat me. He might nice. be a little sloppier than me. I don't know. You live with both of us for yeah. a year. But, um, yeah. well, so one time, like I never, like we lived in this house where there were no, like there was no dishwasher, right? 
And I was a guy like I ate and I just threw my stuff in the sink. And there was four of us in the house at the time, Travis or Gray's brother-in-law now, Pat McNamara, another three-time All-American that we live with, Gray and myself. And so they were like, Nick, it's your turn to do the dishes. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever, whatever you know, whatever. So I remember... I, I remember like I was gone for it or whatever. I came back home and all the dishes were like in my room. Like, they <laughs> took the dishes and put them in my room. As they should. <laughs> <laughs> and I was pissed. And, uh, but yeah, of course, you know, yeah, that's, that was a hard lesson. Learn to clean up after yourself immediately. I think we put a jug of pee in your, your room too. Nice. No, you know what? I don't know if you put it in there or if it was me lazy. No, lazily. You, you you were sick, you know, and you uh, peed in a jug right by the TV, and we came home and it was right there. Oh no! Closet. <laughs> we put it in your closet, and then it what it didn't move until we moved out of the house. Oh my <laughs> it was god! Like, it was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Nick. Yeah, yeah, we all uh, we all have our things. You know, you were saving it for a rainy day. Yeah, you never right, know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it was, it was great. He was a good roommate. He kept it lighthearted, and, and uh, we had good times. I mean, you, you know, at that age, it, it it's really hard to you know to have it all together. Anyways, I mean, you're still learning. You're still growing, and yeah. kind of finding out about yourself and and like what you want to be. And, you know, it's a part of that journey, I guess. Yeah. Well, you know, some, some people only learn the hard way, you know, and I guess I'm one of those yeah. guys. The, the, I'm an experiential learner. Are you still jugging it these days? I or? mean, we all do, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, still how jugging? is you going to really learn? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. yeah. Jordan asked if I'm still, if I'm still jugging, if I'm still jugging it. And uh, the thing is, is, you know, uh, I'm not going to lie. There was some interest in, like, I got into, like, the yoga thing for a little bit. I was doing, like, the, the, the Vedic, uh, uh, what do you call it, Ayurvedic medicine. And there is a recipe, yeah. and I can neither confirm or deny this, that I've uh -oh. tried this. Okay. But it's called urine therapy, and there's been other okay. elite athletes that actually consume their own urine uh, to yeah. help uh, with all kinds of stuff, a variety of issues. Have you heard of this before? Yeah, Juan Manuel Marquez did it. Uh, right. Loyota Machida. Machida, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. A bunch of guys. So I'm not. Listen, I'm not. I'm not. There's no obsession or fetish with pee or anything. Is like that, that why you use the jug? No, no. <laughs> I used to get sick. the jug. Was, yeah, I Maybe was so sick that time. I used to get. I don't really get sick anymore. But I, I in, co in college and high school, I'd have these like. In, the, in some at uh, some point in the year, I'd be down and out for like a week at a time, and yeah, uh, yeah I remember just being so like so sick that I just had this gallon jug there, and I just peed in it and laid there, and I laid on this couch for like five days in a row, and uh, they just kind of let me be. But the bathroom was literally ten steps away. Right. Okay. Right, Priorities, right? You know, here come the shots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here come the shots. All right. No, it's true. Um, no. It was <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, I mean, we yeah we yeah, we, we all get we, it. Uh, we all did stuff in that house, and, and uh, yeah, we had yeah. fun though. It was good times. You know? It was it was yeah. good times. Definitely like some crazy and, and wild things that that happened at that house. You know, during season we were like on point. We uh, we woke up for our morning workouts on time. We trained. We you know went to class. Did everything that we had to do. Well, I, honestly, I didn't go to class as much as I'd wanted to, um, but uh, you know, it was just a great I experience. Did. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't go to class much, but that's what I wanted to do at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we were. There, I mean, honestly, man. I mean, we were there. We were there for a job. We were there to wrestle. That's why we went there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, that was our, that was our job. I mean, some of these guys that go out, you know, they're at these other colleges and they're majoring in engineering and I don't really understand yeah. how they do it. You know, they're not really, it's just a different, yeah. you know, different strokes for different folks. Some people are very focused on school and book work and they're not very socially oriented at all. They don't like being around people, you know, that sort of thing. And me and you are more, yeah. you know, and even Jordan too, we're more, we're people guys, you know, we like being around yeah. and socializing and, 
you know, participating in the world. So I guess it just depends. Right. Like, uh, cause I've got, I've known a few people who, like you said, they go there for a sport, but they spend like they're getting an engineering degree or a medical or whatever. And I think it's like the, the goal is different, right? Where you go with your, your wrestling scholarship cause you want to wrestle and maybe, uh, this guy wants to be an engineer and he's just good at wrestling. You know, and that's, that was his avenue to get there. Yeah. But different yeah. stroke, just like you said, everybody, uh, everybody has their own goal, their own path, yeah, I mean, what they're interested in doing. With me, it was just, it, it, it was really hard to find a degree that I could sit through, you know, and that, like that me. really interests yeah. me. Yeah. And that's why I ended up in, you know, parks and recreation because I do love the outdoors. I do love, um, you know, that part that's the only yeah. classes i could really you know get through and um yeah that's yeah, just my type of brain and i'm not really a, a class guy i'm i'm kind of more of a hands-on learner and um yeah. i mean it's just everybody's different you know and kids are different and some kids you know need to be homeschooled some kids you know need to be in schools and and, and it's just you know, that's what we're trying to figure out with our kids is is wh what's the best way to help them learn and to be engaged and to be, um, you know, to, to, to not just kind of memorize stuff, but to actually learn, right? That's very good. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a common yeah. mistake a between, lot of people make. The difference between information and knowledge, right, or, or wisdom right. and knowledge, right? Yeah. So well, what is so so you so so shifting gears a little bit. So what do you so now well, you know you have the gym, you got the the uh, the cafe or the the restaurant uh, attached to the gym. What do you what do you like to do for fun? What keeps the bully busy? Oh man, um, me and my daughter and my son Jess is gonna stay back and kind of hold down the fort, but we're going down to Kentucky to go backpacking and rock climbing, um, in a couple weeks. Nice. Um, you know, we're, we're outdoors a lot. We just went up to, we went up to the UP to go, to go climb ice, um, ice waterfalls that are nice. all iced over. Yeah. yeah. And, um, wow. yeah, you know, I, kind of really want to get my kids into mountaineering and, and, you know, conquer a couple big mountains and, and, um, you know, do some cool backpacking trips and, you know, ultimately travel the world and, and, uh, you know, try to be outdoors as much as possible and, and, um, create, you know, good memories with the kids. Cause, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, laying on that deathbed i don't know if you know it's going to be about money or you know time you lost yeah spending with, spending with your kids and your of course your wife and yeah yeah times are the most valuable possession I, you know i, I, I would agree with that yeah. yeah but that's what we like to do we like to be outdoors we like to be together um it's hectic right now but we we still try to eat dinners and, you know, together and, and try to have a day and, and, um, yeah, just, just, you know, do the best that we can and, and, uh, you know, try to be happy and enjoy life. Good, man. Awesome. And then you're still staying active with your gym. You got the, uh, got prime combat up and going. You guys have been up, what, about a, a year now? Is that how long it's been or a little over? No. No, I've been open about two months. Oh, two. Oh, okay. Jess I'm opened sorry. Opened up in October. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Jess opened yeah. up in October. You know, Jess is doing great. Um, she, she's got like acai bowls and um, um, good smoothies and you know mushroom coffee. Jess got her master's degree in. Uh, functional nutrition and nice. uh, re yeah, really helps. That's right. You know, people with with you know chronic illness. Uh, yeah, going over blood work and you know um, 
really tries to dial people in with nutrition and yeah. and healing through nutrition and and healing through you know lifestyle change and and uh and yeah she likes to work with women a lot you know there's not a lot of research done with women and and that's that's kind of her avenue as well but um yeah yeah, yeah. it's I think that's a great point, you know, like, you know, the differences between men and women and, uh, you know, just, just the way, you know, genetically we are unbelievably different, you know, between, you know, uh, hormone cycles and menstrual cycles oh, and, and yeah, yeah, and, you know, and, and, and the way uh, men are socially viewed as opposed to the way women are socially viewed even now too. Like they try to, a lot of, a lot of people are trying to say, well, yeah, we're exactly the same. Well, yeah, we're, we're all, we all are cause we're all living beings, right? We're all going to be, we're all going to yeah. live, pay our taxes and die. Right. But at the end of the day, yeah. there are fundamental differences between a man and a woman. Would you, would you agree with that statement? hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. Yeah. Um, is there anything you want to air out right now? Anything you want to talk about? Like, um, just whatever shits and giggles. What's, uh, what's, what's the, what's the bullies, what's the bullies, uh, go to food lately? What's, you know, what's go to your, food. Yeah. What do you like? Oh, I mean, what do I eat the most of? Yeah. By the way, you're the first person to ever introduce me to fish tacos. Yeah, back in back yeah. in like 2001, we we're cooking on the one of those yeah. Foreman grills, like the you know not the yeah, not the yeah. press one, but the other yeah. one. You came back from, I don't know where you were. You're in Mexico for the summer or for for yeah. a trip, and you're like, hey man, I got this recipe, and he's like, try this, and it was like mahi mahi and cilantro and like you know, lime, you put lime. I was like, what are yeah. you doing? Lime on a taco. And it was, un, it was like life changing. That's some good <laughs> yeah. eating right there. That great. <laughs> yeah. I got to get that That'd recipe. Great. So, yeah. You so know, what you, what, honestly, like my go-to <laughs> food right now is, is kids leftovers. Whatever's <laughs> left over on the plate, I'm eating it. We spend so much damn money on food because Jess is kind of a Nazi when it comes to our food, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, 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 just, yeah. And and to buy to buy good quality stuff, you know, it's 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 expensive. So yeah, I know if the kids don't eat it, I'm just like, wait a second, let me get that <laughs> yeah. shovel it in my mouth. But no, like like our little boy, man, he he eats uh, like sardines. He has. Uh, like salmon row, he he, um, yeah, he's he's a pretty good eater, man. That's wow. good. That's good. Wow. Yeah. Salmon row and sardines. If I bring those yeah, around my kids, I'll riot right at my house. They'll just put it in a bowl. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. I just started eating s sardines myself, but man, I can imagine. Yeah, my kid. Well, the thing is with my kids, like if I open sardines or like you know, there'll be a riot at my house. I have to the smell. The or, yeah, I don't know what it is. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of the smell, but yeah. I I love them. Man, now. I drink the juice out of the can. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the olive oil right out of the corner huh yeah my little boy eats it and then i'm just like wait a second yeah. <laughs> you can't wait, let this, this go to this waste cost at least this is 50 cents right here <laughs> well, i noticed food. i noticed with me as my body's changed as i got older and i you know with like I've been divorced now for a year. So it's like, I've just threw myself into like fitness. That's all. That was like the massive therapy for me. And, uh, I switched yeah. to like a keto carnivore type diet and my body's responded very yeah. well to that, you know? So that's kind yeah. of what works for me right now at this moment, you know, uh, you know, and it's, I feel honestly, you know, I mean, when we're training the way that you've trained, the way you're training two, three times a day for a camp, the beatings that you've put on to yourself that we, you know, I, I did it, but not to the level that you have, you know, like your body takes a toll, but at the same time, I think yeah. the body's capable of healing too, you know, man, I feel great. I mean, I could jump right back into a camp right now. Well, you you know? look great, but that's, you know, and I attribute a lot of that to nutrition, you know, nutrition and sleep, you know, I try to get that dialed in. 
those are the two most important. And then uh, just moving your body daily, whether it's, you know, doing yard work or, or what, whatever you can do, you know, going on a walk, going on a hike. And, uh, you know, if you can get a good workout in, great. If not, um, you know. But, yeah, those those are the two most important keys in life are, are nutrition and sleep. And then, you know, uh, behind that, like really close is just moving your body and, and yeah. uh, sweating. You know, Dan Gable, he, he said it the best. You know, he's like, you know, your body's like a body of water. It can either be a pond, nasty, murky, dark, or it can be a stream constantly moving flushing away impurities and crystal clear yeah yeah i like that I, mean, a lot. I agree that yeah you want a flowing river rather than a stagnant river right yeah yeah yeah, yeah it makes sense yeah that's a hell of an analogy um, yeah no he's a smart guy among other things yeah the legend yeah no oh, yeah the greatest yeah. ever yeah. yeah yeah we'd love to have him on on the show at some point too, but listen, man, um, it's, uh, if there's anything else you'd like to mention or throw out there, you know, um, message to your kids, shout out to anyone. Now's the time to do it. I you know we want to, uh, you know, endorse your, your gym, uh, prime combat. You're in Lansing, uh, Michigan now. Uh, this, yep. and what's, what's Jess's store? Blend. I thought he said blend, blend, blend. blend. Yeah. yeah. Blend. blend. And, uh, yeah. You know, check them out, anybody, any of the listeners, if you're ever in the area or anybody that wants to, you know, be a part of or spend time with an absolute legend as an, you know, as an athlete and a great man. Um, that's the person you want to be around is Gray Maynard. I appreciate that, man. Appreciate uh, it's it. been an absolute pleasure, man. I'm so happy to meet you. You know, thanks for talking yeah, with us. Yeah, great meeting you. Yeah. yeah, right back. You know, I appreciate yeah. it. We'd love to get you down here to Tampa. Maybe we'll, you know you guys can come down, and we'll, we'll we're in the works of doing some things with uh, you know with you know setting people up with trips because we have um, Tampa. We got you know fishing obviously is the big is the big yeah. sport here. The big, and, but we also have uh, just north of here we got the springs. We have these, oh. these all these cave networks that are in the springs up north of here, Wikiwachi oh, nice. in, the, in the Chassawiska River. Three yeah, sisters, yeah. The three sister springs. Yeah, it's pre, it's pretty. It's crystal clear, seventy two degrees all year, uh, and it's yeah. There's networks and networks of caves. I'm sure you would love to explore and check out. We'd love to have you down here. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm in. Yeah. Let's go. All right. <laughs> We'll get it done. That sounds good. All right, man. Gray the Bully Mater. Great to see you, man. Love you, bro. And uh, we'll talk you, again soon. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks so much. You be Congrats safe. Congrats on the podcast. Glad to be on it. Yeah. You, yeah, you're one of the in, in, inaugural members. Big guys, little Guess, guys. Yeah, big guys with little ties. That's the name of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Big guys with little ties. There we go. <laughs> I right, appreciate you, sir. Thanks so much. Awesome. Man. All right, bro.